Oh, he's doing it down the inside. How excited he feels to gain 10 places he's effectively. A 13 one times winner of the revival, that shows why. Yeah, but he, he hasn't just overtaken nobody, he's Brilliant. overtaken everybody, and everybody is everybody. And now we've got number seven, Phil Kadori. Oh, he, he did this yesterday. He doesn't lift when he goes off, he just keeps it going. He's got very, very good natural balance in the number seven Cobra. Just where he lost momentum last time into the chicane, he's lost it all over again, but he's still in the race, and he could nearly not have been the case. Philip Kadori, a huge fan off-road safari and rally driving, not intimidated by the dirt or the grass here at all, as we've just got a flash down into the pit lane on the screens of Ollie Hart, one of those young superstars of Goodwin waiting to take his place, as is Andre Lotterer, the co-driver to our pole sitter, Chris Wilson, who has dropped down to eighth position, but got his elbows out. Meantime, Nigel Greensaw posting the fastest lap of the race so far at 27.2. The lap times significantly slower than in qualifying, partly because they're all jousting for position, holding each other up, partly because they're now running on full fuel tanks that need to get to the end of this one-hour race. Great to see the two, uh, the two matching Cobras, 13 and 68, running together. That back view uh, of the car sliding through into the approach to St. Berries is stunning. And uh, all through the Jaguar uh, group goes as well. But there we go. There's the white. It was the white Chevy leading this group. And again, Phil Cadori getting very, very wide. Craig Davis, the white and blue Corvette, able to start to stretch. Clear. He's worked his way up the order very well. The red and white Corvette, unfortunately, has visited the pits. That's the one that Marcel Fessler's come yeah, to drive. That's so that's the Harry Phillips uh, Jimmy packaging. It's had its problems. That's right on board with uh, Chris Wilson. He started on pole position and uh, locking up in front of him, Phil Cadori, as he does every lap, going down to Woodcock because he doesn't mind carrying an awful lot of speed into the right hander. This time for once, Phil Cadori in the silver. Oh, very nice exit from Kadori and uh, trying to jink around the Corvette on the start finish right here. We're on the outside line when they get up towards Madwick. Who's brave? Well, we can see Phil Kadori's madly brave. He's on the outside. Can he hang there the whole way around? But Craig Davis has many, many years of experience oh, of racing. Let touch. me shunt your tail around a bit. So, tyre wear one, brake wear one. Kadori, let's hope there's no puncture there. Oh, I, I fear he may have been punctured there as the tail came out on the Corvette. That's to be crabbing, that's really bad luck. That was nothing to do with him there. That would, that would be such a shame for Phil Cadori. It's ever diff It's so difficult when you go two abreast into the corner, particularly in these historic cars. They slide so far that if you take the tight compromise line into Madwick, we have another look now. Davies on the inside, he's got a compromise line. He's having to turn in on a tighter line than normal, puts a wheel up on the kerb. That flicks the car out wide. The car goes light over the little crest there between the apexes, big over steer, no space for the two of them, and I hope that the track into Nissan Warfare that's led to Gary Pearson uh, having to drop out of the group, having a little bit of frontal damage, having hit the back of the AC Cobra, number one Cobra of Darren Turner, and now look, Mike Whitaker is right on the tail of Bill Shepard a few laps ago, has really like, who said the fastest lap last time, Mike Whitaker, 1 minute 25.9, more than a second faster than Shepard, that's why he's on the tail of the 47 Cobra, did Shepard go too fast too soon. He certainly put very, very hard on the opening lap, trying to keep up with Nick Minassian. Sideways off the start. Kaduri is gaining some ground again, isn't he? And uh, we have Whitaker's all over now, the back of the Shepard car. As this car, the number 16, the Tajiro Ford, begins to make a little bit of an escape. It's 1.3 seconds to the good going on to this lap. Yeah, this is perfect for Nick Nassian out front. This is exactly what he wants to see in his rear view mirror. His closest oh, rivals tripping over one another as Whitaker gets very sideways on the outside of Lavin in his hunt for Bill Shepard in the Cobra for second place. Kaduri had a massive moment coming into the approach to uh, St. Mary's, locked his brakes, slid really wide, but he's held it together. You know what, after that clatter, he lost a lot of momentum. We worried he might have had tracking problems or a puncture, but that Kaduri down in the 12th place now, just set his fastest lap of the race, so clearly all is fine. He's recalibrated, pressing on, but you're quite right. Sam Minassian has uh, just made, well, let's see what his advantage goes down to. It's about 1.3 seconds last time in the lead. Must be nearer two, 2.3 seconds. And because, why, why? Not only is Bill Shepard having trouble staying in second place trouble lapping at the same pace but now he's being really really pushed and uh, i think within, within two more corners possibly underneath your feet mark as the tbr surely will be going to second place yeah shepard having to go really defensive into madrick at turn one that forced him wide on the exit of that corner giving whitaker a run down into four 
Cobra. He can't make the inside line stick. The Cobra has the legs on the TBR, but then side by side, Shepard around the outside into No Name, and with you now, Marcus, yeah, in not, St. Mary's. So he had the legs, but not when the TBR was on the apex. He couldn't run right on the outside. And, uh, uh, we've got Greensall now there in the Tiger, uh, just right behind him, and uh, Wakeman in the Lister as well. Four-car group now, the chase. As the, as the TBR was fighting with the Cobra, Greensaw came with so much more momentum into the second part of St Mary's. I thought he was going to side past the two of them, but unfortunately the track was more than occupied. And now it looks as though the escape has been made by the driver who was fastest in the race last time around. Just a whisker off his best qualifying time. Think about that in the mix, the heat of this battle. While still the little thing in his brain still getting tyre preservation, but it's not saying that at the moment. This is the thing, you have to be so careful as a driver when you're sizing up the gap ahead and you're tempted to sit in the car up the inside you have to remember that these cars waft across the road far more than modern machinery and you need to allow for that otherwise the envelope is going to close very quickly on the apex and may i say yes yesterday evening you were doing precisely that in the sussex trophy brilliant brilliant run at the front but the tbr starting to stretch clear another fastest lap for it last time around so whitaker into second place but oh has he got a problem let's had a bit of as the replay here we go sorry i looked down from the screen for a second what a brilliant move into St Mary's, and look, they gave each other just enough space, but certainly seeing Patrick, uh, Nigel Greensaw getting closer and closer, and the, in the Lister Tiger in behind, diving up the inside, but not making it work into lab, and if he gets it wrong, he's suddenly got Fred Wakeman looking to not what Bobby Bryant wants, but he's no stranger to racing these cars for this circuit, lights flashing. Lights flashing, desperate to get through the traffic without getting hold up, which he does do successfully, and this is another skill set required of the drivers the gaps in the traffic who can slice their way through without being delayed who's the most efficient at doing that look to the sports car drivers that's what they have to do at 16 Hart and 86 Jordan running together six and seven so let's take a look Roman Dumas lost out a little bit in traffic coming down towards the end of the lap there's another Cobra up in front of them I think that's the number seven car we'll check it's a silver one but that is not in their battle that is really obstructing their battle so waiting to see does the this the time to come into the pits. Oh, very, very tight indeed. The number seven Cobra just gets out of the way. We're riding on board with the car in fourth in third place. That's the number two. Andre Lotterer Cobra. Cobra's as far as the, the eye can see changed. Dumas, the lead. Dumas. Dumas up the inside of Ollie Bryan into Madwick. Did Ollie get slightly delayed? Did he have to check the throttle on the way out of the chicane? Because Dumas got a run, completed the move into Madwick. He holds it on the run down into Fordwater. As Ollie Bryan now comes under pressure from behind. Well, let's take a look. He around. must have been obstructed. They're both in AC curve, but there's no way the number one is less power than 47. No, obstruction. well, very slight obstruction. They use the slipstream up the inside. Oh, oh my golly! That number seven, we've all flinched the country box now riding on board. Let's see how they close, get, how close they get to the number 71. Porsche cannot see it. Here goes the 47 car up the inside. Oh, oh my gosh, coming out of the pits. That oh. is threading the eye of a needle. You almost need to take the clothes off to get through that gap. That was extraordinary. What a miss. Bill Shepard. He's going to start breathing again on Tuesday. That was his car going through the smallest of gaps into the lead of the race. I'm going to sit down for a little bit. Oof, take a breath, Roman Duma. Absolutely the bravest man here at Goodwood. He did not lift out of that for one second, and it helped him complete the move. Meanwhile, Lotterer piling on the pressure. It's Wally Bryant. So that is our original pole-sitting car that Andre Lotterer is now driving in fourth position. But remember, the Greensaw Watts car, that is now in the in second position because really effectively what the Greensaw Watts car is in the pit position is now just in the nick of time. Up into the lead goes Roman Dumas, number 47 cover. He's just been blocked by Steve Soper in the white and blue Corvette Stingray and that gives Lotter a chance to get a better run through the match mix. And you can see the cars that didn't stop before the safety car standstill the cars that did stop are absolutely flat chat around the circuit and it's tightening up at the front but unfortunately for the red and gold car number one that was still looking for its first win in the tourist trophy it's falling back a little bit in third place we'll see who's going to get up onto its tail but it's now looking like a two horse race very suddenly the 47 cobra being pushed right past marcus's feet by a charge of andre lotterer a big one for uh, right now he's got the uh, the white corvette uh, in front of him uh, which is uh, Steve Soper now, isn't it, in number nine, and splitting him from the other Cobras. Lotter is gaining, isn't he? Lotter is gaining on Romain Dumas. Two Cobras going head-to-head. -head. Meanwhile, 
What's that rule in motor racing? Who's the person you want to beat the most? A teammate. They're not in the same car this time, but all those years has worked Audi drivers at Le Mans. And so you can be sure there's not needleless competitive rivalry between the pair, but leading the way is Romain Dumas at the moment. They're having to work the traffic as well. The E-Type is in between the pair of them, riding on board with uh, Andre Lotter into the chicane. Uh, E-Type's perfectly fast enough, but in terms of sheer ground, have you ever seen the Cobra not out accelerating? the start finish rate pass of each time. Not this man, we're riding on board with the leader, Roman Dumas, as he wrestles the Cobra down a gear into the chicane. Under pressure now from Andre Lotterer in the Cobra behind. It's Lotterer now who has the pace. Roman Dumas adjusting his mirror, making sure he remains keenly aware of Lotterer's advances. Well, he's not close enough yet. Roman the defensive line, but surely on this lap he's going to have a look. You'd have to say so, he gained eight tenths per second, Lotterer did on the race leader, down to just three tenths per second behind, riding on board to go to the fastest point on the circuit, the fastest corner on the circuit, four water, Dumas slides a little bit wide, it looks much sweeter for, for Lotterer, trying to go up the inside, there is no inside of course, no, Dumas not going to leave the door, he tries, he tries the, the outside. outside, he tries the Sam Hancock line. <laughs> Didn't get it completed this time, but don't discount him. I'm not sure I've ever seen Lotterer looking quite so fighting. This is fantastic. Um, Two of the best professional sports car racers in the world in pretty much equal cars. I reckon, I reckon Brian might have a problem. He looks like he sounded like he was less on the throttle that time. Yeah, but, but Martin Haven, knowing uh, knowing Formula E and knowing Andre Lotterer, has just worked out why fan boost. That's what's being provided. Fan boost, right. the extra horsepower for when he wants to use it for a couple of laps. Now, watch the body Lotterer. language of Dumas as he's going to faint to the right, just shutting the door early there in the braking zone. Now he's going to walk to the left to pick a good racing line for himself into Woodcut without opening the inside completely. That will dissuade Lotterer from having a look into Woodcut. It's easy to hold position down into the chicane, but he nearly outbreaks himself. You saw him having to make a big correction on the way in before straightening up and heading onto the straight with a nice one car leg cushion. Well, he's gone out to just a whisker under a quarter of half a second and still trying to hang on, actually faster than the two of them. Well, it's uh, Ollie Bryan behind. His only hope is that the lead duo keep on taking chunks out of each other, not literally, but just in terms of moving the other car around and delaying each other. Wants to make it the three cars, nose to tail. At the moment, it's three seconds covering the top three cars and a blanket covering the Here top two. Here we go. Two. He's doing it down the inside. Lotterer goes, he completes the move on the way outside of Ford Water. Duma had to lift, he washed a little bit wide out of Ford Water down the dip, had to get out of the throttle. That allowed Lotterer through on the inside, and he's already pulled two car legs on a run down into Laban with you, Marcus. Yeah, incredible. That was a super move, it was so clean. And it was well before the approach to uh, the first bit of Ford Water, and he's through. Well, I just wonder how much Dumas taken out of his tyres or how much Bill Shepard took it out of them in the first part of the race because now the two fastest Cobras are 